The following program is furnished by The Truth About Your Future, LLC. The views expressed do not necessarily reflect the views of this station. This information is education and not financial advice. Consult a financial advisor before investing. The Truth About Your Future with Rick Edelman is brought to you by Bitwise, the world's largest crypto index fund manager. And by Global X ETFs, dedicated to providing investors with unexplored and intelligent solutions. And by Invesco QQQ, a fund that allows you to access the innovators of the NASDAQ 100. And by Edelman Financial Engines. Rick Edelman is a board member, consultant, shareholder, and client of EFE. But EFE is unaffiliated and has no say over the content of the truth about your future with Rick Edelman. This is where technology, innovation, and personal finance come together. This is the truth about your future with Rick Edelman. And now your host, Rick Edelman. And a very happy Memorial Day weekend to you. I'm Rick Edelman. Welcome to the truth about your future. On today's show, interest rates and volatility. What the CEOs of BlackRock, J.P. Morgan, and Goldman Sachs are now saying about crypto corporate buybacks, market pessimism, a new T. Rowe Price survey about kids and crypto, what is an oracle, Vanguard versus Schwab and Schwab wins, and this week's health and wellness segment by my wife, Jean Edelman. So let me ask you a question. How you feeling? Well, probably pretty pessimistic. Well, you're not alone. People are more pessimistic about the financial markets than they were even at the start of the pandemic, even more so than during the 2008 credit crisis. It's understandable why there's so much pessimism. Fund managers expect the Fed to raise rates seven times this year. Some expect 12 rate increases. Inflation has been rising at the fastest pace since 1981, and you would think that with all the pessimism, people not wanting to own stocks and bonds, mutual funds, ETFs, people are selling all those assets. They're taking that money and throwing it into bank accounts. Banks don't want your money. They've already got $9 trillion in cash. That's more than they have in outstanding loans. This is why bank savings accounts and CD rates are so low. Because the banks don't want your money. Their attitude is, go somewhere else. Let them have your deposit. I mean, think about this. Over the past couple of years, the federal government gave out $1,200 stimulus checks. They gave out $600 a week unemployment checks. They gave $300 a month child tax credits. And the government's not done, not just at the federal level, where they're talking about $10,000 student loan forgiveness. In California, they're getting ready to give everybody in the state a $400 gas debit card. There are 11 million jobs open in America, two for every person who's employable but not working. But why should you get a job when the government is throwing so much money at you? Since there aren't enough people willing to look for work, employment levels are still below that of 2019. And this is a challenge for the economy because if employers can't hire the workers, they can't make the products, they can't sell their services, and there is that much less for people to buy, and we have economic stagnation coupled with inflation. Here's the crazy thing. Even though U.S. consumers are pessimistic about the economy, in the first quarter of this year, credit card spending was up 28% compared to a year ago. And by the way, it's not just your debt that's an issue. It's federal debt. Federal debt is now $24 trillion. And 30% of that money are U.S. treasuries that mature within the next 12 months. Now, what happens when the federal government has a U.S. Treasury that matures? They have to replace it with a brand new U.S. Treasury. The problem is that interest rates are much higher today than they were 12 months ago. And that means the government is going to have to start spending more money than ever on the interest on the national debt. In fact, interest on the national debt is the fastest growing part of the entire federal budget. Oh my goodness gracious, you can see the challenge. And in the middle of all this, we have I-bonds. 
I bonds are really a wonderful thing. I've talked about them often here on the show. They're paying over nine and a half percent. Somebody somewhere, please explain to me why we allow the government to issue bonds that are paying an interest rate that is three to four times higher than anybody anywhere else in the country is paying. All we're doing is exacerbating the federal debt problem and the cost on the interest on that debt. Meanwhile, so far this year, bonds have lost more than 10%. 30-year treasuries are down 20% this year. I warned you about this back in January. I warned you that we were going to have a very terrible year for bonds because as interest rates go up, the price of bonds goes down. And we are seeing the worst year ever. Prior to this, The worst year for bonds in the United States was 1842. It's bad, and it's going to get worse. As interest rates keep going up, the price of bonds keeps going down. And all bonds are affected to this, including mortgage-backed securities. They're in turmoil. Because of the hot housing market last year, there were $4 trillion dollars of mortgage-backed securities issued. The Federal Reserve bought most of them. Investors had to buy only $300 billion worth of those bonds. But this year, the Fed isn't buying so much. They're not supporting the economy the way they did during the pandemic. And therefore, the amount of these bonds that investors have to buy has doubled to $600 billion. Think about that. If there's twice the supply, what does that do to demand? Demand isn't twice as strong. And that means you can expect further price declines in mortgage-backed securities. So what do you buy when you want to buy stocks? Well, if you're the corporate CEO and you're sitting on hundreds of millions of dollars, billions of dollars in some cases, what do you do with all that cash? So what are corporate CEOs doing? They're buying stock of their own company. They're called corporate buybacks, and corporate executives are buying back a trillion dollars worth of their own shares this year. Now, on the one hand, you could argue that this is their way of saying, we think our stocks are oversold, that the prices are too low, and they are a great bargain right now. But keep this statistic in mind. The last time we hit a high of corporate buybacks was in 2000, right before the dot-com bubble, and 2007, right before the 2008 credit crisis. This is, in fact, the worst start to a year, the first several months ever for the NASDAQ. It's down 21%. The S&P has fallen for six, seven consecutive weeks. We have seen massive losses in individual stocks. Netflix fell 35% in a single day, 49% in a single month. It's down 71% from its high. NVIDIA fell 32% in a single day. PayPal down 24% in a single day. Amazon, down 14% in a single day. And the FANG stocks, Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, and Google, collectively, they've lost more than a trillion dollars in a single month. I kind of love it when people tell me that Bitcoin is volatile. Invesco is no longer recommending a 60-40 portfolio. They're now recommending a 50-30-20 portfolio. 50% stocks, 30% bonds, 20% alternatives. Alternatives? That's a new word. A word you need to get familiar with. New York City's Comptroller manages the city's $500 billion pension plan and retirement assets for police officers, firefighters, school teachers, and other government workers. And he now wants permission to invest in alternative investments, private equity, bonds that are high yield debt, meaning junk bonds, foreign stocks, alternatives, they say, are key in times of market volatility. 
Texas gave its state pension plans permission to invest in alternatives. So did Georgia. Other states and cities are revising their rules as well. Hedge funds, non-traded real estate, and yes, crypto, all in the alternative space. Related to all of this is thematic investing. Thematic investments have tripled their share of the global investment market over the past decade. Now, 3% of all stock funds are thematic funds, $800 billion in total assets. I invented one of the first thematic funds, the iShares Exponential Technologies ETF. The symbol is XT. I invented this back in 2015. That fund now holds $3.5 billion in assets and has a wonderful track record of above average returns and below average risks. It's an exact example of thematic investing. There are now dozens of ETFs available with a similar theme in the area of exponential technologies. You have a whole bunch of fund companies, including Global X and Invesco, that offer a wide array of thematic funds, recognizing that these categorize as alternatives to traditional investment management. So as you are trying to evaluate your investment strategy, recognize that you probably have a traditional portfolio, 60-40, Oh, maybe it's 65-35, or maybe it's 50-50. The time might be now for you to consider adding alternatives to your portfolio. And yes, in the world of alternatives, that's where you'll find crypto. Stay with us for more here on The Truth About Your Future. This message is brought to you by Charles Schwab. No matter what tomorrow brings, some things won't change, like Schwab's commitment to see the world through clients' eyes. That commitment is why Schwab is always here for clients with clear guidance and committed service to help maintain focus on achieving long-term goals. So whatever happens today, Schwab remains invested in you. Visit schwab.com to learn how Schwab is ready to help. That's schwab.com. Want to invest in digital assets but find it all a bit complicated? There's actually a very easy way that you can invest in this new asset class. Simply choose the Bitwise 10 Crypto Index Fund, symbol BITW. It's the first and still the biggest crypto index fund. It owns the 10 largest digital assets and rebalances monthly, so you don't have to decide what to buy or when to rebalance. Bitwise does it all for you. At Bitwise, we want digital assets to be available to everyone, and that's why we work closely with individual investors like you, as well as financial advisors and institutions. At Bitwise, crypto is all we do. If you believe digital assets should be part of a diversified portfolio, take a look at the Bitwise Crypto 10 Index Fund, symbol BITW, available everywhere you get your investments. There are major risks to consider, including the loss of your entire investment. Before investing in crypto funds, visit bitwiseinvestments.com to learn about the risks with these investments. Allow us to introduce you to Sabrina, an ordinary person who helped shape the future by putting her money behind the right ideas. Each morning, Sabrina enjoys a 20-mile bike ride and meditation that brings her serenity for the day to come. Sabrina is also accessing the companies that are revolutionizing the tech world by investing in Invesco QQQ. Invesco QQQ is a fund that allows you access to innovators of the NASDAQ 100, which goes to show you don't have to be an integrated circuit engineer to help push progress forward. Become an agent of innovation. Learn more at Invesco.com slash QQQ. There are risks when investing in ETFs, including possible loss of money. ETFs' risks are similar to those of stocks. Investments in the tech sector are subject to greater risk and more volatility than more diversified investments. The NASDAQ 100 Index comprises the 100 largest non-financial companies on the NASDAQ. You can't invest directly into an index. Before investing, consider the fund's investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses. Visit Invesco.com for a prospectus with this information. Read it carefully before investing. I'm Rick Edelman. This is The Truth About Your Future. I want to ask you a question. Do you have a target date fund? I hate these things, but they are hugely popular. 
And now it looks like Vanguard really messed up with one of their target date funds. And now they're getting sued for gross negligence, breach of fiduciary duty, unjust enrichment, and breach of good faith and fair dealing. Oy vey. Here's what happened. Vanguard had two target date funds for the sake of this conversation. One of them was for big institutional investors, pension plans and 401k plans with billions of dollars in assets. Another target date fund was for individual investors and for small 401k plans. To invest in that institutional fund, you had to invest at least $100 million. The fee was less than the retail fund. It kind of makes sense, right? You invest a huge amount of money, you pay less. Okay, that's not unusual, but here's the deal. At the end of 2020, Vanguard changed the account minimum for the institutional fund. Instead of having to invest $100 million, Vanguard lowered it to just $5 million. So all those small 401k plans that were in the retail fund sold their shares and they moved their money over to the institutional fund, which is cheaper. The two funds were identical except for the fee. So by making the shift, these small 401k plans got to save money by moving over to the larger institutional fund. This was very nice of Vanguard to let them do this. It saved all those little 401k plans money. Great. But so many of these small 401ks sold their shares out of the retail fund that Vanguard had to sell 15% of the fund's assets to raise the cash to send it over to the institutional fund. And selling all those shares triggered huge capital gains. Now, this didn't matter to the 401k plans because they don't pay taxes. But it sure matters to all of the ordinary retail investors who are also in that fund. They got hit with massive, unprecedented capital gains distributions. 40 times more than ever before. And they got no notice that this was happening until they got their 1099 in the mail early the next year. So now three of those investors are suing Vanguard and they're seeking hundreds of millions of dollars in compensation on behalf of all the investors. These three say their tax liabilities are $55,000 just for the three of them. Imagine the tax hit for everybody else who owns those shares. Everyone on Wall Street is shaking their head, trying to figure out why did Vanguard handle this the way that they did? It's going to be really interesting to see how this lawsuit plays out. And in the meantime, I just got another reason to hate target date funds. You're listening to The Truth About Your Future. Hey, I'm really excited to tell you that I'm launching something brand new. Master Classes. I really want to help you get a deep dive into the key personal finance topics that matter most. So this year, I'm teaching four master classes, and you can watch all four of them for free. The first master class debuts June 21st, and it's called The Truth About Crypto. Yeah, just like the title of my new number one bestseller. My next master classes will be in August, October, and November. They're on financial planning in the age of longevity why your investment strategy needs to include exponential technologies, and achieving retirement security in the 21st century. They'll all be online for free, and you'll be able to watch them whenever you want and as often as you want. In addition to these free master classes, you can also sign up for my exclusive VIP master class membership. You'll get access to all four of the on-demand master classes, plus you'll get private access to eight one-hour live Q&A sessions with me, where you'll have the opportunity to ask me all your personal finance questions. Plus, you'll also get unlimited access to all of these Q&A session videos. You'll also receive an annual subscription to my monthly newsletter. Sign up now at thetruthayf.com. In my first master class, it's all about crypto, blockchain, Bitcoin, and other digital assets. In almost two hours, you'll finally get to understand what everybody's been talking about and why there's so much excitement about crypto. My Truth About Crypto Masterclass premieres June 21st. You can watch online anytime. Sign up now for my first masterclass and become a VIP member too. Get all the info at thetruthayf.com. It's the truth 
AYF.com. You know, if you spend any time at all in the world of crypto, you come upon the notion of an oracle. What on earth is an oracle and why does it matter? Well, it's real simple. As smart as blockchains are, blockchains in a fundamental sense are really pretty dumb because they exist only online. For example, if I program my money to send it to you only if a certain day occurs, meaning I want you to get my money in two weeks, or only if it rains, or only if a certain sports team wins a game, then that's all well and good. But how does the blockchain know that that event occurred? I mean, how does the computer code know that it was raining on Wednesday, or that Kansas did win the game. That's what an oracle is. An oracle takes real-world events and provides that information to the blockchain so the blockchain can act on it. Because if you think about it, Bitcoin doesn't know if it's raining. So the weatherman in the real world provides that data onto the blockchain so the blockchain knows what to do. That's what an oracle is. And as you would imagine, there are also outbound oracles where something happens within the blockchain and that information is transmitted to us in the real world so that we know what's going on. Oracles, fundamental way that the virtual world reacts and connects with the physical world. I'm Rick Edelman. This is the truth about your future. Those who built their own financial success know that moving forward requires not just the right tools, but an in-depth knowledge of how to use them. That's why Edelman Financial Engines gives you a dedicated wealth planner supported by a team of experts. We know a modern wealth planning relationship demands human insight powered by advanced technology. Our advice is tailor-made for your personal goals, and our investment management approach is based on Nobel Prize-winning research. We model more than 38,000 securities, so we can better stress test your portfolio through thousands of scenarios. See what we can build for you. Call 833-301-4333. That's 833-301-4333. Or visit planefe.com slash T-A-Y-F to get your complimentary financial plan. Edelman Financial Engines. Built for those who built themselves. The Truth About Your Future is sponsored by Global X ETFs. The financial services landscape is shifting before our eyes. Whether paying for groceries, applying for a mortgage, or even buying an NFT, almost anything you could imagine is at your fingertips. As these transactions become more and more seamless, it's easy to forget the innovative technologies making it all possible. Disruptions like fintech, blockchain, and yes, digital assets aren't just pixels on a screen. They're led by forward-thinking companies helping shape the future of finance. And you might want to consider where they fit in your portfolio. But where to start? At Global X ETFs, we offer a range of thematic investing solutions targeting these financial disruptions, in addition to other exponential technologies like lithium batteries, artificial intelligence, and more. Explore our insights and full product lineup at GlobalXETFs.com or ask your financial advisor. That's GlobalXETFs.com. You're listening to The Truth About Your Future with Rick Edelman, sponsored by Choice. Choice is changing the way Americans save for retirement by making it possible to invest in Bitcoin, crypto, and other alternative assets inside your IRA. That's right. Whether you open a deductible or a Roth IRA with Choice, you can invest in Bitcoin and 22 other digital assets in your retirement account. You can also buy stocks, mutual funds, ETFs, gold, real estate, and more, all in a single retirement account. There's no hidden fees or account minimums, just more control over your retirement savings. And Choice makes it ridiculously easy to combine all of your old retirement accounts with a rollover concierge service. So if you've switched jobs in the last few years and have been putting off rolling over your old 401k, make sure you check out Choice. Head on over to retirewithchoice.com slash Rick. That's retirewithchoice.com slash Rick.
Welcome back to The Truth About Your Future. T. Rowe Price has just published its annual Parents, Kids, and Money survey. They've been doing this for decades. 57% of kids, these are kids ages 11 to 14, 57% of them are familiar with crypto compared to only 47% of their parents. A third of parents say that their kids are actively trading digital assets. And the kids were asked, if you were given $100, where would you invest it? 57% said crypto. Only 38% said stocks. 40% of kids said crypto is the future of investing. So if you think this is a fad, well, maybe it's a fad for you, but this is a permanent trend for the next generations. I talk often with you about Bitwise and the BITW, uh, which is the Bitwise 10 Crypto Index Fund. This is not an ETF. It's not a stock, uh, but it kind of trades like one because it's a security that trades over the counter, meaning you buy it in a brokerage account. Why would you want to? Well, if you're interested in investing in crypto and you believe in diversification, meaning you would like to invest in a broad array of digital assets rather than just Bitcoin or just Ethereum, that's why BITW, the Bitwise 10 Crypto Index Fund, is popular. Uh, It's the largest fund of its kind, uh, over four years old, and a multi-billion dollar fund. And people like it because it owns the 10 largest digital assets, not just Bitcoin, not just Ethereum. Those are the top two. But what about the other top eight? Well, that's what you gain access to in the Bitwise 10 Crypto Index Fund. And as I mentioned, you buy this uh, in your brokerage account. You buy it alongside stocks and ETFs and mutual funds and so on. There's no minimum amount that you have to buy. There's no minimum time requirement you have to hold. The market prices will fluctuate, of course, daily, like every market price does. uh, And they have been readily available. But I have gotten some emails from listeners over the past month telling me that they own the Bitwise 10 crypto index fund, symbol BITW, in their Vanguard brokerage account. And they have just received a letter from Vanguard telling them that Vanguard is now prohibiting the further purchase of these securities. They're allowed to sell out if they want to, but they can't buy more. Well, if Vanguard has made this decision for whatever reason they did, I frankly really don't understand it, then simply go to another brokerage firm that will let you do this. Transfer your account from Vanguard to Schwab. Schwab allows you to trade over-the-counter securities in your brokerage account at Schwab. That's where I do it. I own Bitwise, and I do it in my Schwab account. So you can too. And to help us talk about this, I'm happy to welcome onto the program Barry Metzger. He's Managing Director and Head of Trading and Education at Schwab, and he is also president of TD Ameritrade, which is merging with Schwab. Barry, thanks so much for joining us on the program. Thanks, Rick. It's a pleasure to be here. So talk about this. Schwab allows its clients to buy over-the-counter securities, including those that invest in digital assets. Well, let's just start there. Yeah, happy to. Over-the-counter securities, you know, simply are securities that are not listed on a major exchange. I mean, for the informed, speculative investor with a high-risk appetite, investments in OTC securities can help drive portfolio performance. However, they're very volatile investments and they're very speculative in nature. So it may make sense, but people definitely need to swim with caution. I'll also add that OTC investors should conduct really thorough research before investing in any of these companies. The fact that you have all those caveats is demonstrating that you want to make sure investors are taking care of themselves and not exposing themselves to risks that they're not aware of. That makes perfect sense. But that doesn't mean that you're going to go so far as to prohibit. I mean, if the SEC is allowing these companies to be public and trade over the counter, why on earth would a brokerage firm prohibit an investor from having access to them? So it's not just the fact that the investments are available at Schwab. Schwab doesn't leave it there. You also have a massive amount of education that you provide to your investors as well. Talk about that. Speaking generally, we offer extensive education for traders of all stripes, both at Charles Schwab, 
through the Schwab Learning Center, our podcast, Schwab Live Daily, as well through a number of resources made available by TD Ameritrade. And, and let's talk specifically about crypto within that OTC marketplace. Yeah, so a lot's happened in the crypto space in the last couple of years. But for investors interested in cryptocurrencies, Schwab has several choices for gaining exposure to these markets. Although these can involve high volatility, FT fees, and other risks, they trade over the counter and behave like closed-end funds. There's also Bitcoin futures. Bitcoin futures contracts are agreements to buy or sell a specific quantity of Bitcoin at a specified price on a particular future date. Clients have a couple of ways to get exposure to them, depending upon the Schwab account that they have. And finally, cryptocurrency stocks. Some stocks provide indirect exposure to cryptocurrency due to companies' relationship in digital assets. So clients still have the ability, if they choose to, to get exposure to the cryptocurrency market through Schwab. And that is really the major point here is that you're not necessarily telling people that they should buy crypto. That's not your job. Your job is to make available in the marketplace. You know, it's kind of like uh, a buffet, you know, here's all the availability of opportunity. It's up to you, the investor, to decide what makes sense for you in your circumstances, what's in your best interest. And you're helping the investor make those decisions by providing not only the availability of these investments, but also the education to help them learn about them so that they are more likely to make the investment decisions that are right for them. Isn't that kind of what it all comes down to? It does. And, you know, picking up your buffet analogy, we want everyone to read the menu very carefully, understand all the calories, all the risks, and make sure it's a suitable meal for them before they start diving into everything that's available to them. But that is the point. It is available to them if they feel it's suitable for their financial objectives. So the simple answer is this. If you own BITW at Bitwise, and you are not able to obtain them with the brokerage account you currently have, then simply consider moving that account to Schwab or opening a brand new account at Schwab where these securities are available and take advantage of the education that Schwab also provides so that you know exactly how these things work and you're not going to get yourself into trouble unexpectedly. That's Barry Metzger, the Managing Director and Head of Trading and Education at Schwab. And now you know why I have my account at Schwab as well. Barry, thanks so much for joining us on the show. Always, Rick. Happy to be here. Thank you so much. Barry and I actually spoke for about 10 minutes. If you would like to watch that entire video cast or listen to the entire podcast, just go to thetruthayf.com. The CEOs of BlackRock, J.P. Morgan Chase, and Goldman Sachs all told security analysts that client demand for digital assets is rising. BlackRock CEO Larry Fink says BlackRock is studying digital assets as well as stablecoins, tokenization, and blockchains. BlackRock just launched a blockchain ETF. This is kind of a funny turnaround for Larry Fink. Four years ago, he called Bitcoin money laundering. He changed his tune, hasn't he? J.P. Morgan Chase CEO Jamie Dimon says J.P. Morgan is building blockchain technology. Last year, Jamie Dimon called Bitcoin worthless. And at Goldman Sachs, CEO David Solomon says, quote, there is significant focus on Bitcoin. And Goldman recently announced the acquisition of Polynax, a digital assets exchange that lets people buy and sell Bitcoin and other digital assets. Goldman's also looking to engage in NFTs, particularly tokenization of real assets. Solomon says that crypto, blockchain, and the digitization of money is going to spur significant change in the way money moves around the world. In New York, a beauty care retailer is offering investors a new kind of security, a security token. The token converts into a share of stock when the company does an initial public offering. If you buy the token now, you get a 20% discount when they go public. Bentley University is now accepting crypto when you pay for your tuition. You want to learn more about this? Read my article on the subject at thetruthayf.com. Stay with us for more here on The Truth About Your Future.
Want to invest in digital assets but find it all a bit complicated? There's actually a very easy way that you can invest in this new asset class. Simply choose the Bitwise 10 Crypto Index Fund, simple BITW. It's the first and still the biggest crypto index fund. It owns the 10 largest digital assets and rebalances monthly, so you don't have to decide what to buy or when to rebalance. Bitwise does it all for you. At Bitwise, we want digital assets to be available to everyone, and that's why we work closely with individual investors like you, as well as financial advisors and institutions. At Bitwise, crypto is all we do. If you believe digital assets should be part of a diversified portfolio, take a look at the Bitwise Crypto 10 Index Fund, symbol BITW, available everywhere you get your investments. There are major risks to consider, including the loss of your entire investment. Before investing in crypto funds, visit bitwiseinvestments.com to learn about the risks with these investments. Allow us to introduce you to Tom, an ordinary person who helped shape the future by putting his money behind the right ideas. Tom enjoys tending to his tomato garden and is currently developing the perfect blend for his homemade spaghetti sauce. Tom is also accessing companies that help change the course of the aerospace industry by investing in Invesco QQQ. Invesco QQQ is a fund that allows you access to innovators of the NASDAQ 100, which goes to show you don't have to be a rocket scientist to help push progress forward. Become an agent of innovation. Learn more at Invesco.com slash QQQ. There are risks when investing in ETFs, including possible loss of money. ETFs' risks are similar to those of stocks. Investments in the tech sector are subject to greater risk and more volatility than more diversified investments. The NASDAQ 100 Index comprises the 100 largest non-financial companies on the NASDAQ. You can't invest directly into an index. Before investing, consider the fund's investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses. Visit Invesco.com for a prospectus with this information. Read it carefully before investing. Those who built their own financial success know that moving forward requires not just the right tools, but an in-depth knowledge of how to use them. That's why Edelman Financial Engines gives you a dedicated wealth planner supported by a team of experts. We know a modern wealth planning relationship demands human insight powered by advanced technology. Our advice is tailor-made for your personal goals, and our investment management approach is based on Nobel Prize winning research. We model more than 38,000 securities, so we can better stress test your portfolio through thousands of scenarios. See what we can build for you. Call 833-301-4333. That's 833-301-4333. Or visit planefe.com slash TAYF to get your complimentary financial plan. Edelman Financial Engines. Built for those who built themselves. Welcome back to The Truth About Your Future with Rick Edelman. Great to have you with me this weekend. Now, I hope you've read my book, The Truth About Your Future. Yes, the name of this program as well. The Truth About Your Future, the New York Times bestseller, is all about exponential technologies and how it's going to revolutionize every aspect of life on our planet. The book has a chapter called The Dark Side. It's chapter 12. The dark side we have to acknowledge, well, there are sometimes negative side effects of technological innovation. And I want to share with you two new examples of the downside, the dark side of technological breakthroughs. There are 1,500 dating apps. They try to connect you with people that you'd like to meet. And increasingly, people are using these apps to find love. But now it looks like the apps are killing romance. 40 million Americans use online dating apps Romance used to be about mystery and excitement and discovery. Now, it's all about data. And with so many options available, it becomes harder to know which option is best. The apps have therefore increased anxiety around dating. It's impacting body image and self-esteem. It's also creating an addictive element as people keep searching on the apps. It's leading to dating burnout. That's one negative side effect of technological innovation. And here's another one that's frankly a lot more disturbing. You know, scientists now routinely use artificial intelligence to find molecules that could one day become drugs that could be helpful in combating disease and illness. 
these scientists program the AI software to combine molecules together. The first thing they tell the computer to do is to see if this brand new combination is toxic. If it looks safe, then they investigate further to see if there might be a health benefit like treating cancer. Researchers at a pharmaceutical company had an idea. Instead of programming the computer to find only safe combinations of molecules, they wondered, could they use it to find toxic combinations? The results were published in a new paper, and as they readily admit themselves, they were freaked out. In just six hours, the AI software generated 40,000 virtual molecules that could be used as chemical weapons. This included nerve agents, neurotoxins, and an entirely set of new classes of chemical weapons. The researchers went no further. They didn't try to manufacture any of their discoveries. And they have not published a list of them, and they have not described how they programmed their AI computer. They just want the scientific community, as well as military and government officials, to know how easy it has become for anyone to do this. They wrote, quote, Our own commercial tools, as well as open source software tools that are available in the public, along with many data sets that populate public databases, are available with no oversight. Yeah, as exciting as exponential technologies are, we have to admit, there's a dark side. I encourage you to read chapter 12 of The Truth About Your Future, but not right before you go to bed. Time now for everybody's favorite segment of the program, Visit by My Wife, Jean Edelman. Jean is a student of the healing arts, Reiki, traditional Chinese medicine, homeopathy, acupuncture, and of course, macrobiotic and plant-based cooking. Here's Jean. Great to be with you this week. I have shared many times with you subjects that I'm studying. The subject this week, and it has come across my desk many, many times, is the vagus nerve. Now, I'm not talking about going to Vegas, V-E-G-A-S. I'm talking about Vegas, V-A-G-U-S, nerve. So I want you to picture a periscope like appendage, one that tunnels. It starts at the back of your head. It tunnels to your ears, and it tunnels deep into your body. It's like a pneumatic tube where messages from our immune cells, our endocrine system, and our microbiome constantly talk. This is our vagus nerve. It is a very, very important component to our health. Just as our eyes take in our outer world, our brain uses the vagus nerve to get a detailed sense of our inner world. Our vagus nerve has fingers in all of our major organs. The vagus nerve modulates hunger. It manages our stress. It regulates our immune system, including inflammation. It wanders down the torso, extends to the heart, the lungs, and through our abdominal cavity. It reaches as far as our colon. It is the concrete connection between our brain and our gut. The vagus nerve regulates our bodily functions. When we swallow, when we cough, when we sneeze, when we go to the bathroom, when we're nauseous, that is our vagus nerve in action. Now, we were never taught to connect the dots. What we have thought of our body as all these separate systems. But now that we know about this vagus nerve and how it connects all of our systems, it is truly an amazing nerve. Now, we can improve the overall health of our vagus nerve. First thing that we can do is deep breathing, calm, diaphragmic breathing. The best results is to sit up straight, to exhale completely, to put our right hand on our chest and our left hand on our belly, and breathe deeply through our nose for five to seven seconds. We want to inflate our belly. Then we want to hold for two or three seconds, and then we want to exhale through our mouth for seven to eight seconds. 
allowing our belly to fall. Hold our breath for two or three seconds. If we practice, this helps our vagus nerve relax. If you can, practice this for maybe three to five minutes every day. Another thing that we can do to stimulate and strengthen our vagus nerve is to gargle. Now, a lot of times we only gargle when we have a sore throat, but maybe you gargle twice a day when you're brushing your teeth. The third way to strengthen and stimulate our vagus nerve is to hum or chant. The vagus nerve stimulates the muscles in the larynx around our vocal cords. And so humming and chanting activate these muscles which stimulates the vagus nerve. So maybe while we're out walking, we hum our favorite songs. And the fourth way that we can activate and stimulate our vagus nerve is through positive social interactions where we're laughing and we're smiling. Our action item for the week, I encourage you to go research the vagus nerve because having an awareness is the first step. Connecting the dots is the second step. And learning more on our own is our third step. So go read about the vagus nerve. And so, of course, my word of the week is going to be vagus, V-A-G-U-S. The V is for venerate, to deeply respect. Now that we know about this nerve, we need to respect it and appreciate it and its huge component in our overall health. The A is for align. When we are attuned and aware and aligned with our body and mind, we will know good health. The G is for grateful. Grateful is this miraculous body, the intricacies. It blows our mind. But when we can understand the wisdom of our body and how it can help us heal and be healthy and be vibrant, we are grateful. The U is for unlimited, without restrictions or controls. We are limitless. We can control and learn and change our health. Small changes every day, they accumulate over time, the days, the months, the years. So as our awareness grows and as we work to have a healthy vagus nerve, when we are later in years, we will feel good. The S is for shield to protect from harm, to defend, guard, and preserve. You know what? We get one shot in this life. We get one shot to take care of this beautiful, amazing body. Let's stand up for our health. Let's make good choices. Don't just settle for anything. Don't compromise our health. The vagus nerve, it's a game changer. If we can keep it healthy by changing a few habits in our day, I'm in. Hope you are too. Have a great week, everyone. That was Gene Edelman here on The Truth About Your Future. And if you want to get more of Gene's words of the week, just go to thetruthayf.com. So on and on I go, the seconds tick the time out. There's so much left to know when I'm on the road to find out. The Truth About Your Future is sponsored by Global X ETFs. The financial services landscape is shifting before our eyes. Whether paying for groceries, applying for a mortgage, or even buying an NFT, almost anything you could imagine is at your fingertips. As these transactions become more and more seamless, it's easy to forget the innovative technologies making it all possible. Disruptions like fintech, blockchain, and yes, digital assets aren't just pixels on a screen. They're led by forward-thinking companies helping shape the future of finance. And you might want to consider where they fit in your portfolio. But where to start? At Global X ETFs, we offer a range of thematic investing solutions targeting these financial disruptions, in addition to other exponential technologies like lithium batteries, artificial intelligence, and more. Explore our insights and full product lineup at GlobalXETFs.com or ask your financial advisor. That's GlobalXETFs.com. Need help managing the complexity of income needs in retirement? Meet Schwab Intelligent Income, a simple, modern way to pay yourself from your portfolio. Tell them how much you need and how long you need it to last. They'll estimate how much you can spend. Plus, you can start, stop, or adjust payments anytime without penalty. And with Schwab Intelligent Portfolios, you won't pay an advisory fee. 
Visit schwab.com slash intelligent income to learn more about their modern approach to wealth management. Well, that's all the time we've got on The Truth About Your Future this weekend. Remember, sign up for my new master classes. The first one debuts June 21st, The Truth About Crypto. In my first master class, it's all about crypto, blockchain, Bitcoin, and other digital assets. And you can watch online anytime. My next master classes will be in August, October, and November. Sign up now for my first master class. Get all the details at the truth, AYF.com. See you next week. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. I'm sorry, what? What part didn't you understand? The bu or the bye? Bye bye. The Truth About Your Future with Rick Edelman has been brought to you by Bitwise, the world's largest crypto index fund manager. As crypto grows, Bitwise believes everyone should have a simple and familiar way to access it. Bitwise makes crypto clear. Bitwiseinvestments.com. And by Global X ETFs. For more than a decade, Global X ETFs has been dedicated to providing investors with unexplored and intelligent solutions. Learn more at GlobalXETFs.com. And by Invesco QQQ, a fund that allows you to access the innovators of the NASDAQ 100. Invesco.com slash QQQ. Stay tuned for Everyday Wealth with Soledad O'Brien and Gene Chatsky from Edelman Financial Engines. EverydayWealth.com backslash radio. EFE and the truth about your future with Rick Edelman are unaffiliated entities. Get the truth about your future every weekend with Rick Edelman. It's the truth AYF.com. <laughs>